So I bought this Lenovo X140e ThinkPad, and it has an okay hard drive inside of it, but it's not fast enough to edit video. So I installed an SSD that I happen to have. Unfortunately though, I've been having a lot of issues with installing Windows 7 on that, or even Windows 8 for that matter. I'd probably settle for that too. So I've been experimenting with installing Linux on here instead, just, just to kind of test it out. I'd say that I'll probably go back to Windows, but it's very interesting nonetheless. I'll show you now how I installed Linux on here. So as you can see here, I've configured Ubuntu to be very similar to Windows. We have our like kind of like a start bar down here with all the settings manager and stuff like that. And also down here, as you can see, every program that's open is in like the start bar or whatever you'd call it. Have like a clock and stuff over here. Even have the weather and like task manager over here. The biggest thing that I want from a operating system is I want the bar down here and I want all my programs that are open to be in that bar. Because I hate it like on Mac OS X, it's just so fucking stupid how you have to sift through all these different windows and they're not just all down here. Also Mac has the issue of every, of like the of a global file bar or whatever up here and well the fact that it's up there in general it's, it, should, it should be down there and it should stay down there but oh well now before we get to reinstalling this operating system let's open up terminal let's type history now this will show us every command I've entered into this terminal because I've done most of my changes with this terminal copy that I will take my Lego USB stick, put it into here. Open this up. Oh, I guess I can't do that. Let me find hmm, text editor. Okay, we'll try that. I'll just paste that in there and save as. Sure, there we go. So now we have all the stuff that I did to get this computer to work. Okay, so now we have that saved. Let's shut it down and hook up the CD-ROM drive so we can install. Now in the BIOS, I configured the computer to always have power going to USB, so I can control the CD-ROM drive even whenever the computer's off because it's always a pain in the butt whenever you have to turn it on to open it up then reset it. So now we can turn it back on. There we go. Oh, we got a cursor now. That's good. So this is all pretty simple stuff. You kind of just go, go through it and just go through the installation and click whatever you want and click what you don't uh, unclick what you don't want. And so I'm thinking about I might just film this as a time lapse. It'd be kind of cool. And it looks like it's done. So now when I turn it on, it should turn on quite quickly since it's on an SSD. Probably like 15 seconds or so. Yeah, look at that. Look at that desktop. Can't re remove this fucking thing. Well, hey, look at that. We have Wi-Fi. So evidently, clicking to install third-party drivers or whatever it was enabled the Wi-Fi because before I had a, a huge issue with that. So that kind of 
takes out an entire step. That's pretty cool. Now I insert the flash drive again. We can see what I did. Okay. Let's see. Ah, right. Sudo apt get update. So I control alt T to open up the terminal. So sudo apt dash get update. Type in my password. Now it's updating. Now in case you're having issues with having Wi-Fi connection, what I did was I hooked up my laptop, well before Wi-Fi was working, to Ethernet and I ran this line, these two lines right here, sudo apt-get install linux-headers-generic, then I ran sudo apt-get install dash dash reinstall bcmwl dash kernel dash source and I believe that I think that's the two lines that installed the update and that enabled the Wi-Fi. Oh, okay so I think here's where I actually got the different desktop up. We did sudo apt get install Zubuntu dash desktop Ah, finally it's done. Okay, so I don't know if sure if I switched to desktop before this or not, but let's just go ahead and do that copy Paste. Can't, can't remember for sure what this does, but oh well. Now we're going to go and log out. I'm going to click on this. Uh, I'll try F XFCE. Log back in. And now I've logged in the XFCE or Zubuntu, whatever. Okay, so we have a panel here. Put that on the bottom. Length all the way. One pixels, yep. Lock panel. Items. I want to add applications menu. So that serves that there. In the applications menu, I want to go to settings. Remove its name so it doesn't take up so much space. So now when you cl click on that, we'll get our like our settings like that. Kind of like the start bar. Add another thing. Set a launcher. Let's add four of those. So this will be... Oh, let's see. A terminal maybe? Okay. So the first one's terminal. The next one will be Firefox be good on there. Not sure if like direct like the that might be it. No, that's not it. I'm wondering one word whenever I click it, it takes me to like my documents or whatever. There we go. So I have that on there. So now whenever I click any of, the, any of those, it'll do that. I'll just leave that one open for whatever. We'll add a separator. And a separator will make it expand so it pushes all the stuff over. So now I can move this over so all my f programs will come up here. Like if I open Firefox, that should come up down here. Yep. 
so that's that's good there and we will add yet another one let's add weather so weather over there send a CPU graph okay yeah that'd be good I think indicator plugin is the last one that I want so yeah it'll have all the system stuff on there like the battery sound and stuff like that and Wi-Fi now for the now I'll just change the back image let's see That's pretty much it, I think. I don't think I did a whole lot else that really changed the system all that much. So that's how I installed Linux on my laptop, and I'm kind of pleased with it. Unfortunately, though, to me, at least of the understanding I have right now and the programs that I've worked on it, it seems to only have the capability of like Windows 2000, maybe Windows XP. But, okay, so first off, what I want my computer to do is I want it to surf the web. And I've noticed that Firefox on Linux is a bit slow. And also, like on YouTube, it'll take a little while longer than on like Windows for it to go full screen. And, I've, and I'm having a couple glitches. Playing video games, the video game library for Linux is pretty much non-existent compared to PC, so that's a pretty big cut. I can't play. I can't play a lot of my Steam li library on here. Making 3D games is really easy because Blender works very well. Editing videos, eh, haven't found a very good video editor yet because a lot of them either they don't have a download page on the download. Thing, a site they have or the little download helper program. It's, it's kind of like a Linux version of Steam. Or I, I just don't like how the editing software works. But I, but there's quite a few other programs I haven't tested yet. Although I did try Blender because I'm a he I've been a huge fan of Blender for like eight or nine years now. But I finally tried to edit video with Blender. <sighs> I haven't quite gotten the hang of it. I'm, I'm just going to stick to using Blender for 3D modeling and making games. But you could still use it for a pretty good video editor. So in the end I think I'm going to go back to using Windows. But I could definitely see if Linux got just a little bit better I could maybe switch to using Linux full time. And also it's not really that difficult to switch out the hard drives on my laptop so it's not a big deal to have the SSD with Linux on it and the hard drive with Windows on it. Let's power it off. It's really only three screws to undo the hard drive. Okay, there's like three more screws inside that hold the hard drive in, but you don't really need those. So once you take those out, you can just keep them out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you go play with Linux yourself. Thanks for watching. See ya.